Linux applications, there are many of them, whether you're a casual Linux user or let's say an experienced enthusiast. There's always more to discover in the world of open source software, from the essentials to the rarest and most obscure tools. We've got a lot to cover, so let's just get started. What we have here would be an iceberg graph. The top of the iceberg will obtain more common and less obscure tools, and the lower we go, the more uncommon and the more obscure the tools will become. For more common beginner apps, let's start off with GIMP. GIMP is the go-to open source image editor. It's a powerful alternative to Photoshop. It's really great for tasks like photo editing, graphic design, and even some animation, and it's a good alternative compared to Photoshop. Next, we do have VLC, and this is really the Swiss army knife of most media players. It can play almost anything, including videos, audio, and streaming content, you really just name it. And it has some amazing features. It acts as a file converter, and you can convert any file format to a different one. Then there's always LibreOffice. This is an amazing open source alternative to to Microsoft Office. If you're a person looking for word processing, spreadsheets, or even maybe presentations, LibreOffice does have you covered on that front. Now, if you're looking for an email client, I would recommend Thunderbird, and it usually comes pre-installed on most OSs if you didn't build it yourself. It's really not just about sending and receiving emails, it also has great features like filtering, tagging, and a lot more. I would personally say these are essential, widely used Linux applications that most users will be familiar with or at least know what they're about. I believe that they're perfect for anyone who's just starting on Linux. Let's get into our popular but less mainstream applications. Bottles. Bottles simplifies running Windows apps on Linux. It integrates Wine with an easy to use interface that makes installing Windows programs just a breeze. You don't have to go through any terminal and any weird funky stuff most of the time. Now this is an amazing game launcher. It's called Ludatris and it's an ultimate launcher sure that you can connect your Steam, GOG, Epic Games, Blizzard, you can connect any games to this one launcher. So you don't essentially have to open up that separate launcher every time and you can just launch it from one place and have all your games stored in a nice little storage. We did talk about GIMP, but for people who like doing photography, Darktable would be a great choice. It is a powerful open source raw photo editor and it's packed with tools that just rival most premium softwares already. Now for those Android users, we have an application called WayDroid. It brings the full Android to your Linux machine, which allows you to run Android apps just like you would on your phone. Peak is a simple yet powerful GIF recorder. It's perfect for if you want to record simple tutorials or moments on your desktop or funny interactions that you can turn into a GIF. Here Ventoy allows you to create a bootable USB drive with multiple ISO files, which is really just ideal for installing various OS's or running live distributions. Here are some productivity and system tools that I find interesting. BTOP is an incredibly beautiful and powerful system resource monitor. It provides real-time stats on CPU, memory, disk, and network usage. It's a great tool and really built well. If you happen to be a privacy conscious user, Onion Share would be for you. It allows you to send files anonymously over the Tor network, which would ensure secure file sharing. We all know NeoFetch and if you don't, it's a terminal tool that would display system info for a clean, customizable way. And I'm going to be honest, it's fairly much a Linux meme at this point. For the people who enjoy wet retro games, this is for you. Some of the older PlayStation games are amazing and I love playing them. So I was looking for an emulator for that. PC SX2 is really an amazing one. It lets you play your favorite PS2 games on Linux with high compatibility and it runs an extremely smooth. Let's say you're a Nintendo fanboy and you got some Switch games you want to play. Ryu Jinx is a solid Nintendo Switch emulator that brings your Switch gaming experience to Linux. Now, if you're a fan of Morrowind, OpenMW is the best way to play the legendary RPG. It offers a better performance and modding support on Linux and is well run by the community. These tools are fantastic for retro gaming and modding which offers a blast from the past with a lot of modern capabilities. There are plenty more I haven't listed but these are some of my favorites. And there you have it. This was a semi deep dive I had into the Linux app iceberg. I listed some of the essentials and rarest. Uh, 
some of the more obscure tools. Linux does have something for everyone and I didn't go over a majority of apps. What is your favorite app? It could be from the iceberg I listed or one that I didn't list. Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. This was Fable. See you guys in the next one. My father slept in the